Let's crack two large double doubles and an angel cream donut. Sure, anything else? That's all. All right, you can pull on up. All right. Is my angel cream donut still here from last week, or did you find that little present? I wasn't wrong, was I? I didn't eat. I didn't eat last week. I had to. Um, I had to uh, install a tent in the, in the backyard, so I used that to hammer the spikes. <laughs> in the Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Donut, 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 donut. Try not to leave it in here this week. Yeah, I can't believe I'm so shocked with myself. You know how they do the, the Easter eggs for Marvel? Yeah. They're like, oh, have you found these Easter eggs? Mm -hmm. I, I, I could swear there's one per, at least one of you out there, that noticed that he did not eat anything last week. Somebody Six episodes, yeah. no ingestion. It's super weird, right? Know, right? So, do people in Buffalo, is Charles Clay, like, one of the most hated Bills on the roster right now? Just from a necessity standpoint, because we got so many people, I can't even name them all. We had, like, eight people comment about, what are we going to do with tight end? I'm not kidding. Through the episodes last week, across every video, almost every single one of them, there's a comment about the tight end position. And there's this rumor going around that there's tons of starting tight ends in this draft. Mm -hmm. And you look at free agency and you go... They're either over 30 or have are coming off of injuries. I'm like Danny DeVito in, uh, in Sunday in Philadelphia. I think <clears throat> I think it's a natural transition for a lot of people to think that way because you still have a young quarterback and yeah. one of the better security blankets for a young quarterback is a reliable tight end that you can have. Yeah. And uh, but notice there was no talk when the run game was successful. Yeah. When the running game was clicking, no one really cared if mm -hmm. the tight end. I don't know. You may have. I don't. But no one would really put a big emphasis on it. And I, I believe that the drop he had, or the, the non-catch, I'm going to call it drop, the non-catch in Miami, yeah. and the drop that he had, I think, like two games later, like right over the middle when Allen hit him, I think really scarred people for, for Clay. Oh, sure. Um, and if, you you're look, not, if you're not on the field the whole season, you can't. You yeah. can't have those things happen. I think coming off the Tyrod Taylor years where he was he – was, I don't know the exact numbers. I want to say like 45 catches a year for Tyrod, for a guy who doesn't throw over the middle. And you have Josh Allen, and now you're catching less passes. You're supposed to be more of a blanket for him. Yeah. And you're not catching any passes. We don't know if he was involved in the offense as much. They did bring in a, a litany of tight ends. At one point, there was four on the roster, him right. being one of them. Right. But then you had Kroom and Thomas, who were uh, – who were fighting for spots basically well I think um, the interesting thing about the tight end position is it's much like what they did at the wide receiver position there was no new blood right when they came into the season they said okay this is what we got it looks a lot like last year it was the same thing as the wide receiver position so yeah. you wonder why the offense struggled I mean look at the skill position players that you put out there you thought you were going to be okay and there's just no way this time in Buffalo uh, never had more than 57 receptions. Uh, never had more than 558 yards. Yay. In his four years in Buffalo, nine touchdowns. That's terrifying. That's terrifying. But, I mean, you want to... By comparison, though. Well, you compare him to his final two years in Miami. He had 102 targets and 84 targets. No, 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 no. I'm talking about... Whoa, wow. No, I'm talking yeah. about by comparison of... He had nine touchdowns in the past four years. Yeah. In one year, Andre Holmes led with three. Mm -hmm. Like, by comparison, for the amount of touchdowns that pass catchers caught for the Bills over the last four years, yeah. he, he was up there. I get it. Yeah. I get it, but I mean, you go back and you look at the Charles Clay timeline and it's just not it's not a good one so what the it's not question, very full no it's not 
<laughs> so the question becomes, what do you do with him, one? Does he hurt your team being here? No, he doesn't. But could you cut him and get a reasonable replacement? You can, for the same money. For 4.5, there's guys out here that would come here with bells on for $4.5 million. Jesse James was a suggestion. I really like that one. Jesse James makes a lot of sense. Truthfully, he had tons of opportunity in Pittsburgh and just never separated himself. Yeah, you could sign him to a, uh, I mean, could, cause like, as we said last week, the Bills have to try to spend money. Keeping Clay on your team, you spend 4.5 against the cash spend because that's his base salary. Yeah. You spend nine overall. Well, do you think Jesse James is worth $9 million as a piece to come in? Okay, well, let's, let's see how we can figure this out. Where if you could figure out a way, I think it would be guaranteed the fact that he would cost more against your cash spend mm -hmm. than Clay would, unless you restructure Clay, which I don't think they're going to do. They're not going to. So if you if you signed, let's say let's say you signed uh, Jesse James to a ten million dollar deal. How many years? His no, his first year. I'm saying the first year of his deal is six base, four bonus, but and then it goes like to two or three a year. It goes after to like that. five a year, four or five a year. That's that's way overpaying for him. I'm just saying, if you get a three-year deal out of him, mm -hmm. let's say you get a three-year deal that's seventeen million. Okay. Uh, you can see eight of that's guaranteed, but some of that you put on the roster bonus. You know, I just I look at this a little bit differently. Jesse James, I like a lot as an option, but Tyler Croft is also a free agent. Is he out like of Cincinnati. He's twenty-six. He doesn't play fast. And he's not necessarily a great blocking tight end. Didn't his, tell you that he is. Was that Eifert that it had his ankle completely um, 180? Yeah, Eifert is an available free agent after a lot of injuries. A lot. Yeah. And, it's, and the problem with Eifert was it's been primarily back issues, and this was the first year it wasn't. Fin finances aside, I'll go back to Eifert, but finances aside, I think the reason why you would hang on to a clay is because you're going to have so many new moves. Parts mm -hmm. on that offense. Do you do you want him to be the veteran presence on that offense? Him, him, and him and uh, Shady are the two guys that people were talking about could possibly not be Bills, and they're the two highest paid offensive players that you have. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, by a mile. I mean, yeah, and it's, it's kind of weird because you, maybe they equate that with leadership. I don't, I don't think you can, though. When it comes to other options out there, again, I'm hearing lots of buzz that, oh, well, there's, you know, lots of options in the draft. There's a lot of decent underclassmen who are eligible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking to see if they have declared yet. Noah Fant declared, so that's not too much of a surprise. Everybody talks about Noah Fant like he's this, he's a dynamic, but he's, He's O.J. Howard-esque, right, See, with that's the, the thing type of athlete to, that he is. That's the thing that will tip you off about what what, what direction this offense is going to go because mm -hmm. all of the free agent, the tight ends that are here, have been used to either pro style or blocking at some point. Mm -hmm. right, that's what they're used to. Right. The, uh, the tight ends that are coming in out of college are more pass catchers. Right. All right. So if that's what you're looking for, I think that's why the emphasis is, is really strong on the – uh, a lot of people are saying, what tight ends do you think would be good for Allen? Because they want a pass-catching tight end, you know? But then you look at the last three games that Gronk has played, he's been a he's, he's been an extra tackle. That's it, he's just a grinder. Yeah. And then he slides out when um, on a play action, you mm -hmm. know? But that, that's the thing. You have, you have very two, vastly two different schools of thought as far as the tight ends coming into the league and the tight ends that are already in the league. Yeah, so I, where do you want to go? I think there's. I think that's an interesting point because when you start looking at drafting a tight end, you do need to make a determination of because there is a big skill set difference now. Before the tight end was the pretty big guy that can catch a little, mm -hmm. right? That's and that's not where they are anymore. No. Now you have the inline tight end who can run the seam route for you, right? Is that what you're looking for? He's decent in the run game, can help you out. Is not going to get too far outside the tackle, but can run the seam route for you. Mm -hmm. Is he is he strong at the ball? Can he run the seam route? Okay, mm -hmm. that's one set of tight end. The other one is that really dynamic, a little underweight and not great in the run game. But 
get the ball in his hands and for the position he's pretty dangerous and I, you know and I think that's where you know there's a big line in the sand with the tight end class because like we talk everybody talks about Noah Fant because of the type of athlete that he is but TJ Hawkinson is the better tight end on on Iowa and he declared for the draft too like Hawkinson's just a better overall player I, Noah Fant struggled to get on the field because Hawkinson was already on it so like Yep. And, and they're both underclassmen, and they and they both declared for the draft. So, I, but they're different athletes. Well, then it boils down to system and scheme. Right. What? What? But what benefits system and or scheme? Is he going to the <clears throat> a team that has a, a, an offensive setup like the Chiefs, mm-hmm. or is he going to an offensive system that's more tailored toward like ground and pound? Well, I think that's so, where it gets interesting because. You take a look at um, you take a look at Tampa, right? They have you two have, tight ends. Yeah, they do. They, and Bruce Arians is their head coach. Mm-hmm. Name me the last tight end in Arizona who caught more than sixty balls. Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Doesn't count. Larry Fitzgerald was not a tight end. No, what a, what but he was saying. the biggest guy on that, That's on that right. receiving court. Right. You have an athlete like O.J. Howard who. It's just not going to be utilized in Tampa. And Arians knows he's not going to use him. I'm not going to use him. You've already got Cameron Bray, who's going to suffice for what he wants and what he needs. I do not oh. see Arians going heavy. Now, that's just my opinion because given so what we saw Howard in Arizona. won't be there, but Bray will. Yeah. I think the other. I think really? Yeah. You see I it the think, other way? I think he would want more pass catchers than interior blockers. I mean, I'd take either of them on the Bills right now. What, what do you want for him? Yeah. What do you want exactly. for OJ Howard? What do you want for Cameron Brake? Give me anything you want no for Jack Doyle. A Jack Doyle's not a bad <laughs> option if he isn't hurt all the damn time. I just time. remember him being the bane of your oh, fantasy I hate football Jack existence. Doyle. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Because <laughs> goose egg, goose egg, goose egg, 45 fantasy points. <laughs> Number three ranked tight end. You're like, what the hell happened? You look and he just exploded one week and then went back to the bet, you know, went back to the you know, goose eggs. No, we're going back to I think he would rather have Howard because he it offers him more options in the pass game. It's, it's, the pa- you know what I mean? It, I d- you know what? But I, I would take either one of them. I would, but right I now. respectfully disagree because you look at Jamin Win- Jameis Winston as his quarterback right now. That's who he's going to have unless the team lets him go, right? And then yeah. you have no quarterback down in Tampa. And you know for damn sure Tampa's not drafting a quarterback with Arians in charge. Arians going to want a veteran quarterback. So they're going to try and find what they can find, right? But um, Arians, he's not, he doesn't want to go heavy. I don't, I don't see O.J. Howard as the piece to him. I think he's going to want to help that run game, and Braid helps the run game a thousand times more than O.J. Howard does. So that's, that's what the tight end is to Arians, is he's that in-line, let's block. And Tampa's a perfect example of the two different types of tight ends. Great is a let me sh- let me lock down this run game and let me get you that seam route. Let me fight off these undersized nickel line. You know these undersized nickel linebackers that they like to put in. Let me abuse them for a little bit when they're in and packages. And okay, all right. And then you have O.J. Howard, who is, I mean, really dangerous when you get a football in his hand. But so he'll keep them both. I don't think he's going to keep them both. I think. Because so. they both offer unique skill sets and what he wants to do. But it, it draws an interesting comparison. I think that draws the comparison between, yeah, between oh, yeah. the types of tight yeah, ends that, yeah. you, that you're looking for. Yeah. And when you look in free agency, you have Tyler Croft, who is just okay in everything. You have Jesse James, who is just okay in everything. You have Jack Doyle, who is just okay. Like, your, your tight ends, Are we done they're just, just okay. okay. But that's what I mean. We already have okay. So We just have okay that's not healthy. And Jack Doyle doesn't. Jack Doyle was healthier. It's Tyler Eifert isn't healthier. Jack Doyle. Every time I hear his name, I think it's like some guy running for the Senate. <laughs> Does, I expect to see like Vote uh, Jack Doyle. Exactly. I expect America. to see a sign in the front yeah. of somebody's lawn. All around good guy. The cool thing that the Bills can do is that a lot of times when you're going to cut a player who's making a lot of money, you're just looking to try and replace what you're gaining in the salary cap with their replacement, right? So a lot of teams that are in the bill circumstance looking to cut Charles Clay would say, okay, well, we can only spend 4.5 this season on yes. replacing him, right? 
the Bills aren't in that circumstance. They can, t they can sign and do whatever they want. The $4.5 million they're going to take on the chin uh, in the salary cap doesn't matter. The $4.5 they're going to save doesn't matter because they've got tons of money to spend. Mm -hmm. But I really think that the Bills could add a tight end via trade with Tampa. I really, really believe that's an option. And um, the free agent class scares the hell out of me. Just not good, too. Just not a good free agent class. It's not good. I don't know if I like the draft much better. Unless it's CJ Hawkinson. He's pretty good. <laughs> I like him a lot. And it all circles around the draft talks. Once again. How is Noah Fant rated the best tight end? He couldn't even beat TJ Hawkinson! Hawkinson was on the field more! Duh! You saw <laughs> what, what? what do you do? You draft the guy, oh, he's got tons of potential. Look at the weapon he could be. Well, sorry, but Iowa's offense sucks. You they sound like suck. A, you sound like a 15 year old girl argu arguing over the Twilight books. What I'm saying is that when your offense blows, like Iowa's offense does, why is he on the field? Does he make your offense better or worse being on it? Oh, he makes your offense better? Then put him on the damn field! It's not hard. 